Today on the show, we got an email from a young wife who can't get her husband to stop playing video games or stop him from cheating on her. <laughs> Real problem, Josh. Should she leave him or give him maybe just one more chance? The corporate media is here to inform you that inflation is good, actually. So if you can't afford groceries right now, just think about how terrible it would be if food was cheaper. Oh, that would be awful. We have an NPC update about Taylor Swift fans that might surprise you, so... I'm ready for excited that. for that, honestly. All this and more on episode 47 of the Blimey Cow Podcast. Jordan, you sent me this. Google's got a new project called Vlogger. It's AI that can animate your face. A picture of you. You just give them a picture and it animates the picture of Our you. Our model and just takes gesture. a single input image of a person and generates a video of that person in that image talking. We can reenact people speaking in different languages and animate not only the face, but also the body and the heart. It looks so dead. But well, like, what's the, like, what's the point? To make vlogging easier. Now you're gonna just, you're not doing any work. You're just saying, make a video that Casey Neistat would make, but Casey Neistat is actually typing that out. And then he just puts the picture of him and then it makes the video for him. In the end, and then you make money. And well, then you can sell your your products and stuff in other languages too. Like Nuestro this. modelo toma una única imagen de entrada y genera un vídeo de la persona en esa imagen hablando. Podemos recrear a esa persona hablando en diferentes idiomas y animar no solo la cara, right, sino también el cuerpo y las manos. Well, also, why is the lighting so bad? This one was weird. I didn't see this one. See, he's actually gesturing. If you have your hands in it, everyone gestures. Oh, that's weird. Oh, we're not going to be able to trust anything anymore. It's going to be even worse than it is now. And it's all just happened so quickly. I think that's the strange thing. It really does feel like somebody was just like, okay, now AI, here you go. Flip just the switch. Flip the switch. And then it's, it's, it's weird. It feels like it, this was already being cultivated. And then somebody was just like, uh, we need AI now. The election's coming up. Right, we is, need AI. Is COVID over? All right, let's bring this in. Yeah, let's that's what I mean. In. Welcome, everyone, to the Blimey Cow Podcast. This is going to be a fun episode. Every Friday, we try to make the world a little less messy. My name is Josh. And I'm Jordan. Comment below with your answer to this week's question. Solitaire or Sudoku? Mmm, two favorites. If you want a free Blimey Cow t-shirt, then head over to supportblimeycow.com, where when you join, you get a free Blimey Cow shirt as our way of saying thank you for joining. You guys are what makes it possible for us to make this show, so we want to give our supporters an exclusive segment of the podcast, too. So we just released episode three of that, or we're about to. Yeah. Uh, so go over to supportblimeycow.com if all that sounds fun. Join the, bus, the, bu, 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 the best community on the internet. And thank you to Devin Carlton, Micah Carter, and Melissa Farthing for joining us this week. And do not forget to check out the Clips channel, everything you love about the podcast without the time commitment. And, and Josh, we finally got to it. We got to a thousand subscribers. We really did. Now we're just trying to get that watch time up so that we can make pennies. Yeah. Literal pennies. We're not even kidding. That's at Blimey Cow Clips. The clips are great. You do a good job with those. Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll be able to monetize it uh, maybe in a few months. Good. Okay. Josh, I, I see that you're thinking about building a pinball machine. Man, I well, you know, I've always wanted one. And yes. then you and Sarah have been talking about playing pinball on the iPad. Fun, poor fun poor game. Sarah's kind of stuck just hanging out on bed rest or whatnot. Yeah, and so, so uh, she's playing a lot of pinball. I got her on pinball and she's... She, I, look, I say that she's, uh, I, I'm really obsessed with it. I've been looking at machines. You can get these virtual machines, the virtual pinball. I mean, for, forget getting a real pinball machine. It's just so expensive. Yeah, it's and like it could be eight to $12,000 if it, you get a good one. more, yeah. And yeah. then something goes wrong with it, and it's going to cost you at minimum $250 to have someone even look at it. Yeah. You know, because it's highly specialized. So many. But aren't those ones just like computers? Like the newer ones, the, even like the Adams Family one, which is the most popular, which is surprising, but the Adams Family pinball machine was the most popular pinball machine ever made. Really? Which is weird, and it's not that. even about the Adams Family TV show, it's about the Adams Family, like, 90s movie. Oh, okay. That one's on the game that I play, and that one is very, very fun. Okay. So I can see why, but it sold, like, 20,000 actual, like, units. units. Wow, that's a lot. Twilight Zone came comes in second. That That makes sense. Um, 
Yeah. So the newer ones are just computers. Yeah, they're more just computer based, but it still has a lot of yeah, but it's parts, got a lot of course. Of yeah. yeah, but it's not like one of the. It's not like one of the older ones where it, it there literally is no computer. It's just like electrodes right. hitting and tr- right. which is like a computer. Uh, but I, sure. So if that breaks, you're screwed. Right. Um, you'd really have to figure it out yourself. I I mean, it would be great to have like a real, honest to goodness pinball machine like you found in the arcades back in the day and i guess they still have now uh but you're realistically it's too expensive yeah I mean, much too expensive even if, even if you knew you could buy it and it would not ever break yeah like it's still just way too much so your only option is to get a uh virtual pinball machine which mm-hmm. is where it's built like a pinball machine it's got it's the box with the screen on top but the it's a screen on the bottom, so you're you're playing like I don't know whatever the pinball games are. Well, I forget what which one they had on there. Yeah, um, there's one on Steam that is free on Steam, but you buy the packs of the pinball oh, okay, machines okay. or whatever. And uh, but you can anyway. So um, Arcade One Up makes them. Uh, At Games makes them, and then you just download it to your machine. Yeah, and you just download the the pack, and they normally come with a few uh, pinball packs, and then you can buy more if you want. So, do, did they convert like Twilight Zone yeah. on there and mm-hmm. stuff? Yeah, so oh, you, okay, you okay, can get cool. Twilight cool. Zone on there, and uh, so, anyways, those are the two companies that make more like uh, affordable ones. But then I started thinking about, I was like, you know, I've got I've got all these uh, like old monitors and stuff that i'm always like how am i gonna sell these what am i gonna do and i've even got like a like a 4k monitor that i that i used for a while yeah that's That's like the right size that i could i could use to build a pinball machine if i wanted to and because people have like all you know you can go buy the parts there are websites that will like sell you the you know the 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 motherboard or whatever to make the connections for the different bumpers and stuff and you can get the you can get like Hmm. a solenoid Mm-hmm. Uh, kickback thing so that when you press the the uh, bumpers the triggers it like pops back at you so it feels like a real oh, pinball cool. machine and stuff that's a fun project right there <clears throat> i've been watching lots of youtube videos about how to do it it's kind that's of convincing me not to do it because it, but these guys are like anybody making a youtube video about it is like yeah really doing it i think you could you could make one pretty pretty simply i mean you it's literally just get the motherboard plug it into the tv and just get the few bump buttons you need and and you're you're good to go put a computer inside of it it's just those those other ones are so nice because they make the nice cabinets i know they make, that's it, the it looks like pinball looks yeah. like the machine and you can get like you can get like speaker like surround sound speakers that like so it makes it makes noises like based on where the action is happening oh that's on, cool man, it's just there's so many that's things. pretty cool I that no like electronics and stuff is something i would love to learn i i bought like a well, when we were doing the homeschool conventions with Blimey, with Blimey Cal yeah. back in the day, uh, I would always try and get like one thing. One year I found this guy who was basically making curriculum for kids for electronics. Oh, cool. And it was like a whole pack and like the book and everything and it like came with everything and like a board. and to, uh, So anyways, I still have that and I've been, I haven't done it yet, but that's something I think about every month i'm like man That's i would cool. love to do that i think realistically i'll i'll get one of these like little cheap small ones and then if i want to upgrade it like yeah. upgrade the parts and stuff that'd be cool maybe i'll do that but it would be fun to have like a, a little virtual pinball machine i know i um, i'm tempted to just buy a old broken one and hope and just see if i can fix it like yeah. one of the more manual ones that yeah. would, and just know okay this thing's not going to work for years I just, right it's like a project you're doing it. i i found a guy who that's what he kind of did he took an old beat up one that had no innards really and it was just the box with a few of the few little things and he just kind of converted it and made it work at least to at least to have a skeleton so he kind of knew what he was starting with but yeah, i wonder cool. how i wonder where you get like those old broken busted up ones and how much they, they'd sell you i don't know so that's essentially like a wood frame that's a whole youtube channel right there somebody who takes pinball machines that are that's, broken and convert them that's all i've been watching man is is these guys building pinball machines that's cool <laughs> that's neat it is so funny there are other people like this where it's just like you get something in your head, like some weird random thing, and now it's all you're thinking about. Know. And you're like, Probably. all of a sudden, you're like justifying spending a lot of money on something, and you're like, no, no, I'll just do the cheaper one. No, wait, 
that's still very expensive. <laughs> Why have I spent three hours looking at this? Yeah, yeah. I should probably just do some something else. <laughs> Other announcement is that next week, uh, we have a big BlimeyCon announcement to make. There's a lot in the works, and we're yeah. very excited to uh, tell you about it. Uh, it's something different than we've ever done before, but similar, but extremely different. Yes. And we're extremely excited about it so i guess i guess the one thing we can tell people is that this is the first year that we're opening it up to everybody normally it was only available to support blimeycow.com people but this year we're making it so that anybody watching this if you want to come to blimeycon buy a ticket and and come hang out for a weekend uh you can do it and uh it'll make more sense why we're doing it that way uh once we tell you a little bit more about it man it's going to be yeah Super fun. So stay tuned. Next week, we're going to do a special episode of the podcast talking all about BlimeyCon and all the years we've done it and and what a cool thing it's been and what we're doing next. So uh, that is, uh, yeah, it's happening in September. So close. It's coming up. So far away. It's coming up. Jordan will have a child by then. Yeah, and the and the baby will be there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Isn't that the, weird the, to think the, about? The master of ceremonies. Your child can be the MC. Oh, that's fine. Sure. All right. I don't, I don't, I'll, I'll let him have the mic. All right. Um, Christian meme review? Yes. I've got three memes this week for you, Jordan. Oh, nice. Check this out. I can't sleep. Might as well read some scripture. Opens Bible. There is no rest for the wicked. Closes Bible. <laughs> <laughs> when they ask me who my life belongs to, Jesus. They really made that look convincing. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. When I have a small group at my house, please leave by nine. <laughs> yeah. But it says, please never. I just leave noticed by that nine. too. Maybe I, I'm sure this was like that, the fun friend. Exactly. Came over. Ah, <laughs> who's this for? Yeah, exactly. See what you brought to the table this week. You told me these were funny. I'll be judge and jury. I watched the proverbial sunrise coming up over the Pacific <laughs> end. <laughs> Uh, that's true. Man, these are a bunch of 2003, 2004 albums. Yeah, I thought about Good that just the grief. other I thought about that the other day and then I saw this and I was like they're reading my thoughts. The only ones on this picture that I don't care about are the Hawk Nelson one. I mean, I listened and is that to Demon it. Hunter and then Demon Hunter. Yeah, all the other ones were like ones that I listened to all the time. What's bottom right? What is that? That the... one. That's FM Static. That was the pop punk side project of the guy from uh, Thousand Foot Crutch. Oh, that's right. Remember? Yeah, yeah. He loves you definitely. Maybe. Yeah. That was a good song. I know. It's a, it's a good CD. It's a good CD. What was your favorite of these albums represented here? Probably Under Oath and then the and then Reliant K. Yeah, I would agree. You know, and Emery, The Week's End is still so good. Somebody uh, messaged me on the supportblimeycow.com site, uh, Samuel, and said, he's like, man, you guys really got me into Reliant K. You really should do a tier list on the podcast of all their albums. <laughs> that would we be should interesting. Do that. We should yeah. do that. We can do a ranky this, very much. This next one made me laugh out loud today while I was eating. All right, let's check it out. La, 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 la. Wait till I get my money right. <laughs> la, 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 la. Then you can't tell me nothing right. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know why. It just it was so true for me. Oh man! Oh, I found myself looking around Redfin the other day. Yep, no, we I all do. Turned off Redfin. Said no. No, I don't think so. No, that's insane. <laughs> all right, good, good memes, good memes, good times. You ready for the message? Yes. Hi, I'm 21 and I got married last spring. I really liked my husband and I ignored some red flags, maybe not a lot of red flags. Sorry, maybe a lot of red flags while planning to get married. Now that we are married, I am a full-time student and work a part-time job. My husband has been employed part-time for only four of the 12 months we've been together, so I pay basically all of the bills. I would be willing to be patient with this, but he is constantly playing video games. He has many friends online, and I have caught him cheating on me with women online more than twice. I am planning on leaving him as soon as I finish with school this semester. Do you think this is the right thing to do? Should I keep trying to fix things with him like he wants me to do? Is this, I mean, this is this normal 
for a person to like have a time in mind that they're going to leave. I'm not going to, this is bad. I'm not going to leave now, but I'm going to leave at the end of the semester. Like, you know what I mean? It, is that it, normal at when people have gotten well, to this stage? Well, I, I mean, it could very well be that she has a lot of stuff she would need to pack up and she doesn't have the time. If she's a full-time student and working part-time and she's paying the bills and stuff, like what, it, like what, who's got the, who's got the time? Who's yeah. got the time for divorce? Video games are a tricky thing because somebody who is addicted to games like, you know, Call of Duty or what is the one that everyone's playing now? Helldivers 2. I've never heard of it. But the other one, you know, where they're they're running around they're like building things and there's guns and stuff oh, like Fortnite? that. Oh, Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> a person who is playing stuff unapologetically like that, they're just full of excuses and it's always everybody else's fault. From personal experience, mm -hmm. knowing people, that's that's just how it is. And so you can't, it's very hard to convince or talk to them because they feel a sense of guilt that they know they yeah. shouldn't be doing this, Yeah. but they're so addicted to it and obviously addicted to other things too, Josh, because he's cheated on her twice, at least, at least. hundreds of times, probably. Um, you know, every time you even look at a woman, you've committed adultery according to the bible so uh it yeah i mean i don't I, I i wouldn't give this guy another chance personally it maybe maybe if he didn't play video games <laughs> maybe yeah i mean no, I, I think the nicest thing and it's not a requirement but the nicest thing you could do is just say look this is over i'm giving yeah. you one more chance here yeah at some point you were we're a nice guy nice enough that i married you so either i'm a nut or you're a good at faking it i don't even bit. know if she should even give him another chance i mean this is just bad yeah this is just bad i can't i mean the the thing that is the dumbest is like why isn't he working because he's playing fortnite yeah, that's so weird. Like, that's what I mean. So but it's always something. There's always a reason why he why he can't get a job. There's always a reason why he can't help with the bills. Why he can't pay the rent. Why he's you know neglected everybody in his life. There's always a reason. It's always ever other people's fault, and it's because of Fortnite. And it's because of Instagram. I remember walking into a a, a house one time with people I had not met before, and the dad was just sitting there playing Destiny. And the kid was just sitting on the other side of the room, just chilling. And I just thought, this is weird. Yeah, that's And I thought, crazy. why is... I mean, I like to play video games. Why is Why does this feel weird to me? And I think it's because if I am playing a video game in the presence of my child, I'm trying to include them in it. Or, like, it's something we're doing together actively. I would never yeah. just be like... I, I guess what it was was I would never sit there and play a game where I'm shooting people in front of my kids. Yeah, that's weird. It's like if, if, if hey, I want to I, I want to play a video game right now. Do you want to come play Mario with me or something? You know what I mean? And if I have time later on at some point, I want to play Halo or something like that for a little bit just to get a, a feel of the old days for a second. Get that rush. Yeah. Then great. I do that on my own time. But when the kids are around, I don't know. It's just yeah, that's weird. Very strange. And it's the same, it's like, and then part of it, it's like, look, it's nice uh, before you have kids and you, you have this free time that you can play video games and stuff, but it's like, man, I remember having a conversation with, uh, with Barry many years ago. He said, dude, if we just spend our 20s making as much money as we can in our 30s, then when we get to our 40s, we can just enjoy life. And that's always stuck with me. He um, said that when he, he said, in his yeah, well, yeah. Well, he said that to me years ago, and I was like, "That's so true." If we just work, if we, because he was like, all of, all the people we know, they just goof off and stuff. Mm -hmm. If we just work, work, work as diligently as we can, we're gonna be okay when we get a little bit older. And I was like, "That's so true." Like, not, not, yeah. not, and that's not even to say, okay, let me just work so much and save all my money. That's literally just to be like, hey, let me just build out my skill set. Yeah. So that I'm I'm valuable either to just myself or to someone else when I get a little bit older. Yeah. But if you just sit around playing video games all day, it's crazy. 
What are you doing? Message answered. A very cl a clear cut one. I feel like it was an easy one today. So let's get to okay. the question of the week. One that's not so easy. Josh, what the heck? Look at me with the 60-40 split. Would you rather see a dinosaur or Abraham Lincoln in real life? 60% say a dinosaur. 40% say a dinosaur, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> wow. He would be a dinosaur at this point. Amazing. <clears throat> I feel like the answer is a dinosaur. <laughs> Right? Like, okay, I want to see a politician. I've seen a human before. I, I want to see a politician yeah. specifically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're just going to get disappointed because then you realize, okay, he is a politician. He's just a person. He's a person. It, you know, it, the thing about Abraham Lincoln, though, is that he, when you see pictures of him, he doesn't look like anybody you would just see out and about. No. You know who he looks like, which is hilarious? Who? Abraham Lincoln looks like one person. He looks like Jefferson Davis, who was the president of the Confederacy. <laughs> he was all a He looked, he literally looks, it's they the look exactly guy. the same. It's weird. I mean, the, it's like those TikTok <laughs> videos where the person is playing both parts. Yeah, that's what's going on. It was, it's all, it was it's weird. all a show. Yeah. It's all a show. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so there you go. What would you, you'd rather see a dinosaur in real life? Oh, yeah. We don't have to spend a lot of time on this. No. I know it's a stupid question, but I no, just it's, I would I'm love grateful to for the split. Me too. I mean, I love it. I would love to see a dinosaur, though. It would be great. I see dinosaurs every day. I see chickens. I see birds. You what, know, what you if, see a bird flying around. I think, wow, what if, like, sometimes I see just a huge bird flying overhead. <clears throat> and I think, I, why would I be so amazed if a dinosaur flew overhead? Like, think about how weird it is that we just have these random animals that are flying constantly. Never, like, just this yeah. ecosystem where they're all I okay. Know. I think you about know? that every time I see an airplane in the sky. I think, you know, even like 100 years ago, somebody would be freaking out right now if they, oh, what, whoa, what is that? Yeah. But uh, I don't even pay attention to it. We don't even, we don't even treat it like it's a thing. There's things flying around the sky, metal steel a hundred years ago would it would they have been hundred they've been yeah. yeah i mean that was just like a, like a decade after a little over a decade after the uh wright brothers yeah you know i'm sure that uh yeah i guess it would have been the airlines probably took a little bit longer to get rolling. that's true seeing a huge plane yeah so there you go uh and what is this week's question jordan oh yes this week's question is a very difficult question solitaire or sudoku which one would you choose? I love them. You know, it's funny. I actually just played Solitaire for the first time in years. Well, we'll talk about that next week on the podcast, Solitaire or Sudoku, and you can find out what we think about all that. Oh, and I have another great question, but I'll save that for next time. Okay, save it. Save it! I'll tell you, though, so that I can remember it. Okay. All right. Uh, what do we got next here on the podcast? I don't know. I just had to show you this. Who wrote this? It's AP. It's the AP, Jordan. Who wouldn't like prices to start falling? Careful what you wish for, economists say. Many, Many Americans are yeah. in a sour mood about the economy for one reason. Prices feel too... They feel too high. It's not that they are. They feel too high. Yeah. What is this? Chuck Norris says, do this daily for more energy, even if you're 80. That's an, that's an ad, Jordan. I wonder what he's saying. Screenshot that for me. I'll put that in the episode. No. Wouldn't it be great if prices actually fell? what economists call deflation. Mm. Who wouldn't want to fire up a time machine and return to the days before the economy rocketed out of the pandemic recession and set prices soaring? <laughs> Is that how it worked? That's, that's you know, it's just... Uh, the economy did so well that prices just went up. It rocketed out of the pandemic recession. <laughs> Dude, so dumb. But it's so obvious. Like, people... You know, I, I, yeah, this is insane. I, you know what? I didn't even catch that when I was reading this. The economy rocketed out of the pandemic recession and sent prices soaring. It rocketed out of the recession. It was like, oh no, the pandemic made everything. Yeah, the the, the pandemic made the uh, create a recession, and then the economy rocketed out of it and just sent prices soaring. Amazing. No one's no one's to blame but the pandemic. At least prices are now rising more slowly, Josh. What's called that's called disinflation. Disinflation. Okay. That's new. I hadn't heard of that. No, one. 
That's a new term. Many economists caution, though, that consumers should be careful what they wish for. Mm. Falling prices across the economy would actually be an unhealthy sign. If things get cheaper, Jordan, that's unhealthy. Oh. Here's why deflation is so bad. Okay. Mainly because falling prices tend to discourage consumers from spending. This sounds a lot like George W. Bush. <laughs> why buy now, after all? If you can purchase what you want, cars, furniture, appliances, vacations at a lower price later. The reality is that the economy's health depends on steady consumer purchases. In the United States, household spending accounts for about 70% of the entire economy. If consumers were to pull back and mass to await lower prices, businesses would face intense pressure to cut prices even more to try to jumpstart sales. Oh, so if prices mm -hmm. fell, then, then they would actually... If people were... No, hold on. I thought yeah. that businesses... Were, were so greedy that just on their own, they were just raising prices. They were price gouging. That's what we thought. I, so but it was, now it's our fault because we're spending money, and so they're like, oh, well, then we're just going to raise prices because everybody has money, so we can just pay, spend whatever we want so we can, we on cars. We shouldn't get what we want, which is lower prices, because then the, then the businesses would even lower prices even more. This is sad because <laughs> think of how many people are in debt. I mean, it's almost like every single American is in debt. And so these people are like, well, yeah, people are in debt, but they need to keep getting in debt so that the economy can do well. So that it, prices it, don't it drop. It doesn't make any, like, it's how, insane. How can anybody, I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody really reads once inflation, deflation. They just know, oh, prices are up. And then may, maybe they see a headline that tells them, oh, well, I, I heard that if prices fall, that's bad. But also, I can't afford things, so but it's just I don't know like, what I believe. It's just like life. If you th This is like thinking too hard. Obviously, this is propaganda, but it's people thinking too hard. Whereas in life, in your own personal life, you just have to think, what is the right thing to do? And if something bad happens because I got myself in a mess and now I'm doing the right thing and so everything comes to light, well, that's just the price that you pay. But look, you're living in truth now, so everything is going to only get better after it yeah. gets worse so here it's like everybody is in debt in the united states and it's like no well we need to keep spending money people need to still be in keep being in debt so that prices blah 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 but it's like okay well maybe the economy does need to crash maybe people do need to stop spending money because they're like oh hey we're living you're over spending, our means sp you, we need to spend are, less it's, prices are so high that you're spending money you don't actually have just to af afford food like you're you're, yeah. you're you're putting money on a credit card or something to make purchases because we all have made bad choices about college or whatever and <laughs> yeah. everyone's in so much debt and now it's like well now we need a new car and we need to you yeah. know and and life just you know I want to buy the truck I want to buy a truck that's eighty thousand dollars, and I have a, this crazy. I don't know. I, I'm like at some point maybe the, the economy do, really does need to just yeah, so that it, we all can, so that we can all really see where we're at, right? Like in so we know what to build from. Right now, everything just feels it's like all fake, so right, fake, and right. it's like I don't know how to read it. Like people are still spending money. It's like, but nobody. It's okay. All right, I see all these people. You just, see all these freaking Teslas all over the place. Yeah, I'm now? like, how do or just not even Teslas. That's small potatoes. <laughs> these trucks, like oh, these I know. huge trucks. I'm like, I want a truck. How are you affording a nine affording a ninety thousand dollar truck? Like everybody is affording a ninety thousand dollar truck. But me, somebody who's like, okay, maybe I could maybe I could figure out how to maybe get a you know fifteen thousand dollar truck. <laughs> And I'm like, you're like running this out, yeah. yeah, and they're they're driving ninety thousand dollar trucks all the time. I'm passing. The I, I just don't understand I don't, it. I, I have a, a, a weird irrational distrust and hatred for people who 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 tailgate you driving those trucks, Josh. No, just that just that have nice cars. Oh oh oh. You, you're, just in general. <laughs> Their priorities are not in the right place. I told to Kelly you. the other day we're passing Teslas. Like literally, every one of these people is spending six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month on a car payment. Yeah, it's amazing. They're not buying these things out, right? I mean, maybe they are. Maybe these are all the people moving in from, from California. California. Could be. And they're like, "Wow, I sold my house for one point five million dollars, and I bought a house for four hundred thousand. Now I've got all this extra money. I'm buying a Tesla." This feels so weird. It's like, have they been? Have people been living like in La La Land, literally, where <laughs> then all of a sudden it took COVID for them to be like. 
I could sell a two million dollar house and move to Nashville. <laughs> and now it's like because that opened up, it's like how have they never done that before? Right. But it was so no Seems duh obvious. Incentive. Why didn't you do this fifteen years ago? It, it, it's like it, it it's it's weird. We're living in a weird time now where it's where it, and also speaking of uh, spending money, but like maybe this has happened a lot and we just don't remember it because of our age, but the idea of now it just seems like no duh to buy real estate. And before it was like, you could buy, I mean, I feel like any like makes you not want to buy real estate because yeah. It's how could this pot, how, like what has this always been the magic bullet? And like now all of a sudden everybody realized it. Or what What were the head honchos doing right. 30 years ago? I mean, I think we're heading for some kind of decline. But in general, over the long term, it keeps going up. So it just depends. Do you yeah. want to, Do you want to be stuck with real estate for the next 20 or 30 years? Because if you buy it now, you could it could crash down and it could take you a decade or two. I just can't see you it know? crashing. I know that sounds so ignorant. Well, because we because li- we live in Tennessee and we see we see these California, yeah, uh, New York tags all over the place all day every day. Teslas all over the road. T- traffic, traffic in Nashville. I mean, it it is weird how just being on the road over the last few years has really been an indication of what's been going on in the world. Like, I remember during COVID going out for a drive and there being nobody on the road. And I th- I'm thinking, this is the freakiest yeah. freaking thing that I've ever experienced in my life. This feels like The Walking Dead or something. And now you go on the road and there are so many cars on the road because <laughs> everybody piled in Nashville. Everybody is moving to Tennessee. So it feels like we're in this weird bubble. Also, in like 2008, when when the economy was doing so bad, it felt like Nashville was just, I mean, sure things, but it wasn't like, it doesn't hit the same as other places think, for some reason. I, I think we were, is it entertainment based? Cause I Nashville's don't know. entertainment based. I can't figure it out. I, I, when it comes to like the recession or whatever, the 2008, I, I try not to put too much stock in my remembrance of it because that was in the middle of college and I had other things I was thinking about. Yeah, my, exactly. my only connection to that was that Kelly's dad worked in real estate and lost his job. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. the only like they lost their business. Like they had a business and they lost. That's their business. right. That's the only in my head when I think about that. That's what I think about. But I, I'm sure there was more to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the with deflation too. When they talk about oh, like the point is that deflation is bad because then people won't buy things because they'll be cheap. They they might be cheaper later. So, but it's like assuming this perfect knowledge of like, well, if I wait a month, it might be two percent cheaper, and then if I wait another month, it'll be two yeah. percent cheaper. But you don't know, you don't know like what's gonna. You just know that like like for example, I want to get a pinball machine. Okay, mm-hmm. am I not gonna buy a pinball machine because in a month or two it might be a percentage or two cheaper? That's what I mean. I, I, everything like what? feels so weird. I need food now. But it it does, and I feel like I'm getting off topic. But I feel like now all of a sudden everything is just more expensive, and it's not just because of inflation. It's because all maybe it's YouTube or something. Okay. But so many people can now get into these really fringe things where the price goes really high. And it's like those YouTube videos don't go away. So they just keep getting views. Oh, so then it's like, oh, it, forever now, yeah. pinball is going to be. I was going to say, pinball is years- a good example. Yeah, even yeah. if five years ago, nobody cared about pinball at all. Well, now there's, you know, there's 100 right. videos with a million views. Right. So that will always. I, we're not the, the only up. ones all of a sudden interested in pinball. Exactly. Something, something in the zeitgeist changed where we're like. Why don't I have a pinball? Exactly. Machine? Why don't I build one? So my, now my question is, and and I was able to do it with cycling and right. with chess. The two things, like two things that I like to do before they were popular, but yeah. like, what's the so what? But then the then the pandemic happens. All of a sudden, everybody <laughs> likes to do this stuff. So <laughs> I'm just wondering, what is something that's not cool now that is going to be cool in five years? You got to get in on it, whatever it is. Is it going to be like plumbing? Uh, it's Is it going to be, be like manual hands-on labor? Like, what's it going to be? That's what I'm saying. Like, now find, everything has been entertainment-based. Find the most seed oilless oil, whatever is the cleanest oil, and buy futures in that. Lard. Get some lard. Get you some lard futures. All right, all right. 
I'll do it. Weekly prophecy. Okay, get lard futures, but not financial advice. This is not a financial <laughs> show. This is, that's not health advice. I guess that's it. Okay, I great. I don't, What's next? Good, or news, uh, good news, bad news. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we'll keep this segment, Josh, but if it's interesting, um, I like to play with my nieces and nephews a lot. Yeah, you do. The thing that I've realized while playing with them, like the other day, um, some of my nieces and nephews came over, and I had built them, that, like I had been saving this this uh, Christmas present, uh, what are they, rolls, of the, the cardboard like that look like swords? Yeah, the... Uh, Why can I ever think of that c- name? C- c- Cardboard, cardboard roll. roll. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it was like a toilet paper roll, but huge. The big toilet paper but rolls. But this wasn't just like a big one. It was like thin and and it was very strong. So yeah. Like, oh, this is yeah. the perfect sword. Yeah. So I, I didn't think they had ever like made anything like that, uh-huh. given some prior experiences I had with cardboard boxes. I was like, oh, let's show them how <laughs> to make this into a sword. So before yeah. they came, I like made this awesome so i mean this thing is like legit it's uh-huh. awesome i even reinforce it with stuff inside to make it so it wouldn't break as easily like i packed in like papers and stuff to make it so yeah. that it doesn't bend as nice easily and yeah. um and i also made this like i got like a tissue paper box and uh i converted it into like a, a weapon but you can <laughs> stick your arm in it and i put it a, a wood shim inside so they can actually grab okay something inside nice. and so their That's arm cool. looks like metroid yeah and then they can like turn it and it has different that, modes that on is it. something you would have made when we were growing exactly up. um and then i made the the our, my little niece olivia i made her like a little dagger but i oh, reinforced cool. the cardboard with a ruler yeah so um they had they were just when they saw it they were like first thing i i had it in the corner and i i told sarah i was like let's see how long it takes them to find this i'm not even gonna tell them but i'll just see how long and like immediately, Daniel walked over and he was like, oh, and then he was like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. And I could see he was just like kind of started to look out the window. And then he like looked at it and I was like, oh, you can play with it. Oh, cool. And he like grabs it, grabs the sword and they all start grabbing which ones they want. That kind of like matches their personality. But what was funny was they didn't ever really play with them. They just okay. held them. And then they just started coming up with a bunch of rules. Okay. Like. This is the rule for when you're using that, and this is my base, and the rule is, and they just started making this oh, world, but they never really played anything, but they were having so much fun creating this world and making up rules that they yeah. were going to play, but then they kind of did, but it was just very fun for them to make a rule set. Yeah. And I thought this really goes well with this podcast episode that I made um, called How Limiting Yourself Makes You Limitless. Mm-hmm. Stuff isn't fun. Unless there's rules. Yeah. Like the world is not fun unless there's rules that you yeah. can that you can master and like be good at and be better than other people at. Then mm-hmm. and like see where you stack in the in the world and like, oh, I can progress. If there's no rules, yeah. Kids don't have fun. Yeah. They have to have and that goes with with parenting, that goes yeah. with with even just watch a kid playing half the time they're not even playing they're coming up with the rule set for right. the world that they've created i mean that's what we we would have done that growing. we would have spent yeah. the whole, if we made something up or or like i'll give you an example when we would this is a great example when we would go over to jared's house and play four square Half yeah. of the fun of the game <laughs> yeah, was right. making sure that we all had the rules correct. And, and arguing like, no, 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 hang about... on. So it, if it bounces on the line, but then yeah. it goes this, and then, 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 then that's fine. Is that good? <laughs> We're good with that? All right, let's okay, keep now, now we can bounce it off the, the can, wall. Can it we bounce off the wall? We no, do that no, last one week. bounce off the wall. But we said last week you couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. We can do that this week? Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but it's, that was it's, fun. Uh, it's extremely fun. Yeah. And it's fun to... It, I don't know. It just... You know, these days now, they're, it seems like, well, we kids can do anything, or we yeah. want them to, to whatever. Like, there's no rules. On, that's that's actually stressful right. for it them. Is. It really is. And you can is. see what it's oh, doing yeah. to them. Oh, yeah. Parents need to have a rule set. The mm-hmm. world has to have some kind of yeah, structure it, it, yeah. that they can that they are locked into, that right. they have that to they can, play by can, those rules. That they can trust. Yeah, because that's what they right. naturally want to do when you when you spend right. any amount of time with a kid. That's all they do. A lot of that's this is really interesting because I think my boys are getting old enough now that they are start they're they're starting to become. Um, oh, how do I explain this? They're starting to recognize that even in their own play, but they're not mm-hmm. old enough or mature enough yet to 
both play by the at same the rules same at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, uh, I, uh, I'm i going to talk in a little bit about uh, the game Slay the Spire. And that game is, you know, you you play a card that deals 10 damage, but they might have 11 block. Okay, so okay. I didn't actually deal damage to them. So Isaac and Elliot enjoy sitting there playing this game uh, with me. And uh, so they'll go out on the trampoline, and I'll hear them going, Isaac will say, I deal 100 damage. And Elliot goes, no, no, I have 200 block. And they just, like, just back and forth, they're just arguing <laughs> with each other about who's getting damaged, who has the yeah. most block. And there's, they have, there's no, like, they have the rules of, like, the damage and the block. Yeah. But... The rules of like who, wh- how high can the numbers go does not exist. Yeah. Like, there's no rule for that. So, so that's where the conflict comes in. It's like we're playing the same game, but by different rules, kind of. But at that point, it's only fun that they know that they're both playing the same game and that there right. is a rule set that they can't totally grasp, right. but they are still dreaming of the rule set. They're not dreaming of the exactly. game as much as the rules. And your nieces and nephews are a little bit older. Yeah. So they're, they, you know, they can. I, so I'm excited to see how the boys kind of evolve into that. But that's really interesting. That's cool. Yeah, that is mm. that is very true to my experience as well. But then even that just goes to uh, with with you personally, like out there and for everybody, you for me, uh, you know, you need you need to set limits on yourself so that you mm. can actually get good at something. Mm-hmm. Like, don't just constantly be looking at a hundred different things and never really doing anything. That's that's yeah. called uh, YouTube how to porn. Yeah. Like just stop looking just, at all that and just do 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 one thing and just do it and and learn the rule sets. Spend all your time. Spend your time doing up it. how to make a pinball machine. And <laughs> when you do that, then sure. Yeah. But when you do that, you'll learn electronics. Mm-hmm. You'll yeah. you maybe you'll you'll realize oh this is something that is is uh interesting. This this uh, helps helps me in another way in life. And then this whole like labyrinth. Of how everything is connected starts like when you get into another interest that you've actually taken the time to right. actually do. And I'm not talking about just like I'm not talking about just kind of doing something. I mean like literally like your brain hurts because you have deeply focused and thought on how this thing works and you feel really miserable while you're doing it. Mm-hmm. But then afterwards you're like, wow, I that and you feel what I mean when I say you're doing something, I mean you don't feel good while you're doing it, but you feel good after you do it. Right. That's when you know that you've done something valuable. Right. And then you and then you learn to enjoy it once you start to get those patterns in your mind. You start yeah. to enjoy it. You start to learn the rules, and then you can start to play within the rules and become a master of the rules. Yeah. And you, then, you, like they say with yeah. Jesus, that, no, I'm just going on a tangent, but it's just like a <laughs> river. Like Alex Jones says, he's like, I see a river, and I just grab it words. <laughs> But then it's like Jesus. The only time that you can break rules is when you've mastered the rules. Right. Then you can start breaking right. rules because right. you you once, know them so well that you know which ones exactly. are you, you once, playing once you another game. The, once you f- have the confidence to know that you know a subject well enough that you can con- you can you can control and manipulate it because you respect it. And are skilled enough in it to know what is not manipulable. Manipulatable, yeah. Manipulatable, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 You you have to respect the rules enough to then be able to be the Mozart and be able to, yeah. oh, this is what, or or in modern day, what is the guy's name? Jacob Collier or whatever his name is. He's, he's like Gen Z's Mozart, they say. Mm-hmm. But it all starts with a rule set. You have to know these rules, and then you can... Uh, and, and ultra creative people, um, they can, a lot of them are just super gifted and they yeah. don't even really understand why they are. Mm-hmm. But somehow those rule sets are just baked in them when they're mm-hmm. born. Mm-hmm. And the rest of us have to, it, it, so what I'm saying is, it, the rest of us have to do it a different route. And listening to creative, like ultra gifted yeah. creative people is actually not useful at right. all. Right, right. Because they're, it's the same I, again i'm just going everywhere but it's the same thing as uh, um a good like the greatest hockey player ever crosby uh, maybe not the greatest whatever but crosby the current one yeah uh-huh not well when we were watching hockey was penguins crosby. guy yeah yeah he's not going to be a good hockey teacher 
Yeah, cause because he's, he's just he's, he's just good. yeah he's just something yeah. in him. He just knows how to do that. A good hockey player is somebody. Who, a, a good teacher in hockey is somebody who wasn't good, but who worked really, really hard to figure out the right. rules, and they had right. to go piece by piece to understand right. each rule, and then cared so much that they got good at. It. Those are the best teachers. Yeah. Um. So, why am I saying all this? I don't know. But anyways, when I all this went through my mind when I saw when I made that because because stuff, you had like, to oh, okay. you if you had to learn to get good at something. Then you had to understand what the rules were. Yeah, and 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 there's all and I was just doing pipe work, which I'll get to later. But I was doing pipes in my house, and I thought like the copper. I redid all the copper in a big s- section of my house, um, and I thought this is so weird. It's just like one gigantic puzzle, and I can't say that there's. You can't say that there's not truth in the world, and this is so dumb, but when I was just looking at that complex pipework that wasn't necessarily done the best Mm -hmm. by previous people, when I saw it, I thought, okay, objectively, this is not the best way to do this. Like, you've got tape, taping stuff to walls so it doesn't move, and, like, it just wasn't parallel and perpendicular, and I was like... this has got to be done right. I don't even necessarily... I know how to do this, but it's going to take me days to be able to like work through this rule right. set that I haven't really gotten down in the past, but I have a little bit. Yeah. And so I suffered through it. But what I'm saying with like ultimate truth is that you, when you take all that copper out, there's a blank slate. You have to get from point A to point B, mm-hmm. and you have to get over here to... There is 100% the most efficient and right. best way to do that. You can't, you can't, like a creative person, if you're watching a creative uh, genius, they would say, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, you can you can do anything you want. You can make it go this way and this way. You can, but, lo- but logically, it's like, yeah, but you can be creative and, and do it, like, right. and get here. You can read right. the notes and know how and no th- music theory and still be very good at music. You mm-hmm. don't have to just be this creative uh, prodigy. Like right. you're living in the rule set. You don't even know that you're living in it, but you're living in it. And you're telling me that there's no, that I can be as creative as you when you right. somehow your brain is the rule set right. and you're breaking rules because you know the rules so right. well. So I don't know. I, I, this is just a whole uh, whatever the word is I'm trying to say. But this is my deep thought for the week, and uh, there keeping you go. it in. I right. I, th- I think that's really good. Yeah, I think that'll inspire some people. But you know what, Josh, with the copper work. Yeah. At the same time, you can be creative with it because remember my upstairs. I did that copper work with the yeah, faucet. Exactly. The faucet. It. That's not the most efficient that's way what, to get from point A to point B. But yeah. I was like, well, I wanted to be artful, so it kind of went right. around a little that's, bit. That's and, what I was. That's what I thought you were kind of getting at. Is that once you but that's uh, knowing the rule so well that you once can break you know the, the rules, rules and do so something. well, you can say, you know, I could I could do it this way, exactly. but if I did it like this, it would it look would, cool. It would, it would, that would look pretty cool, and that's not much more work. I can do that. But if you're behind walls that no one's going to see, and and stuff is bent, yeah. and it's like, okay, well, that's why this has leaked in the past. I can obviously tell. Well, then I'm going to take no it out pride and in their work. perpendicular and make everything right, and now it looks amazing. It really did. So you, me, you, you FaceTimed me. Looked, I did because we did didn't get to film yesterday, but that's okay. Anyways, I don't even know what that whole tangent was, but there we go. That was the deep thought. Let's get to the NPC update. Literally the opposite of this deep thought. Is the <laughs> NPC oh, yes, update. Yes. Here we go. Just you were suspicious that Taylor Swift was going to lose popularity, and I said it was impossible. But, she is in the good graces with the Obamas. <laughs> but I think. I mean, there's lots of people in good graces with with the top folks at the top of the food chain here. That's right. And so, so what's down they fall. Well, okay. I just I get a sense that Taylor Swift might be on a downward trajectory because I I, I don't think she can get much more popular than she is right now. Okay. And I think that I don't think she had an organic rise. And I think that when you don't have an organic rise, you are going to have a not so organic fall too, because people the only thing they like more than building you up is tearing you down. I came across this subreddit called Swiftly Neutral, and it's all these like 
kind of Taylor Swift fans. It's not like a hateful subreddit or anything, but it's just people who are kind of, they were big fans and then they kind of, they took the glasses off. Okay. But it's just, it's kind of funny because they're not annoyed with her for for like the reasons that I might be annoyed with her. Mm-hmm. They're annoyed with her because she has a, a jet. When she okay. puts out an album, she puts out 20 variants with like a different uh, bonus track on each one. So if you want to hear the whole album, you've got to buy like five or six variants. Okay. And then they're touting, oh, it's the best selling album of all time. Well, yeah, because your your uh, your super psycho fans bought six versions of the same oh, I album. I see, I see, yeah. Remember when Reliant K did that with Two Lefts Don't Make a Right? They had like the four different covers. Yeah, but they didn't have different songs, right? It was no, just they didn't different... have, yeah, it was I just I thought that covers. was pretty fun. Right. I only, I bought the pink one. Yeah, I, I thought that was fun that they yeah. did that though. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> but but it's, it, these people are, are it's like these people just these kids just discovered that she is uh human human a capitalist like yeah. she makes a ton of money and i guess now that she has the tour and she's a billionaire i think that there are people who are kind of over it i think because part of it is that like her appeal is that She's like the every girl, but yeah. she's not anymore. And I sensed this when I first started. Like, you guys listened to her back in the day, and this would have been, like, before Red came out. And so, like, her most popular songs were, like, she wears short skirts, I wear t shirt she's cheer captain, and I'm on the bleachers. But even back then, like, she was, like, this Hollywood model type, and I was like, this song doesn't ring true. Yeah. She's the cheerleader. Yeah. And now it's even worse than that, you know. So I, I don't, I don't know. Even, even, even to a degree, Kelly, who even like just kind of passively enjoys Taylor Swift music, yeah. like has to, has told me, oh, well, she did this thing and that thing, and it's kind of annoying. Uh, and and I've thought, okay, even yeah, like even even the people who just kind of passively yeah. are are getting kind of have heard stories and are getting kind of annoyed with it. So mm-hmm. anyways, mm-hmm. it's just interesting to see uh, that these Swifty fans are seeing the light. Ki- kind of, but it's just like they're like, oh, she's rich. I don't like her because she's rich. Right. So that's and It's of... like, do I, uh, do I just take what I can get? Beggars can't be choosers? Yeah. What do you think about that? Gosh. Is this a fringe little account here, Josh, or what? What is uh, this? This is this has forty five thousand members. Okay, okay, this is promising. Okay, this is promising. And I mean, really, the vinyl variants for her new album, uh, that's what's really making people upset. Right? Oh, now. they're mad. They're mad okay. about because she's always done that thing where oh, if you buy it at Target, you get three bonus tracks. But now it's like she's selling it on her website, and it's like okay, this variant is only available for the next three days on my website. And they're all like, you can oh. print as many of these as you want. Yeah. Are you? Are, did you run out of money to no, print she more? Didn't. No. So everybody is annoyed. It's like I just want to hear all the songs. I think you know, and and you know, honestly, it might not. And I was just talking to somebody about this. It's not that. It's not that a person is making money. It's that the person, when they have more money than they know what to do with, okay, is still doing these cheap things to get money. Right. It's like still, why? Just, still make like it, do me a favor. If yeah. you have that much, why not just make one album with all the bonus tracks? Do you really need to? Because in in their mind, it's like I got here. Because I thought of these good ideas and I have to keep doing these things to keep – look, I know this doesn't make any sense. I'm just telling you this is how these people think. Mm-hmm. When you get to this point where you have more money than you could ever possibly spend, it's like your brain just goes into a different mode of like I could lose it all. Yeah. I could lose it all in a second. Like you were no longer worried about like the average like, man, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I mm-hmm. I hope I make enough next month to buy groceries and pay insurance and do all the dumb things I have to do. Now it becomes I have to protect this. I yeah. have to keep this. And that's why these clowns are like we're going to space. We're st- we're setting up a colony on the moon because the the plebs 
We got we we, yeah. we got to we got to control the population. We got to we got to there's too many people. We got they're eating too much meat, you know. There's just all these random yeah, things that like once up. you once your brain stops having to think in like first level survival or third or fourth level yeah. survival mode, now it just becomes how do I control everything else? How how do how do I make sure I keep this mm-hmm. level of not happy that I am right now that I'm telling myself is happy? But I think you're mm-hmm. exactly right. I think that's you're exactly why the right. common person gets annoyed at this. Right? It's like like what? throw me a bone. Yeah. Like you've done. We you know what I mean? I'm out here. I'm I'm spending hundreds of dollars to go see your stupid concert when I can be- I can't afford enough to buy a house, and you're doing these. Uh, Ten thousand bonus tracks all scattered all over town. I can't. So you can make this insane amount of money again. Yeah. Like, okay. I so I get. I, I yeah. I mean, I don't think that they're. Uh, I don't think these kids are. I think it's just. I think it's just the language. It's the language of just like oh, she, like as if they just discovered she's a capitalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you know, because it, it's hip right now to be like anti uh, anti capitalist. Yeah. With these with these uh, kids. With the kids, and look, honestly, I don't blame them. I, that's what I'm saying. I think they're a that's little misdirected. I think they're a little misdirected, but uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't blame I, I, them. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so, anyways, just a quick little MPC update uh, for know. the people. Uh, maybe Taylor Swift is on her way out. I think she needs to do something uh, to to soften people's hearts to her. Maybe she needs to like. Get married. If she gets married, then everybody will ha- forgive ha- everything. And had, had a child. And had a yeah. hundred kids like she promised in that song Starlight or whatever. Oh, okay. We could have a hundred kids and teach them how to dream. She Is that what that. she wants to do? And now she's 35 you, and hasn't had kids. Can so. you imagine if she got married and started having kids? Think about the baby boom that would happen yeah, in right. this country. That's why, and that's why she won't get <laughs> married and that's why she won't have kids. They don't if if Taylor She don't need no man. No, the, the elites won't let her. If 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 she gets married, she's the perfect single person. Right. The elites are not who have made her will not <laughs> allow her to get married and definitely will not allow her to have kids. There's no way. She's she could for ar- that reason. She could already have kids. We wouldn't know, Josh. Maybe she, maybe she just doesn't see them. Yeah, we wouldn't and know. And we don't see them and she doesn't see them. <laughs> we wouldn't know, but no, I I'm prophesying it right now. Taylor Swift will not well, she may get married, but it would end in divorce. And if it do, and if it and and there's no way that she will would that they would let her have children. And the cynical part to... of my heart believes that you're right. Yeah. No, she's and it's a she, big part of my. She's heart. totally compromised. <laughs> I and with all of my heart believe that's that. why they let her make a billion dollars. You can only make a billion dollars in this country if you are. St- compromise somehow see the guys that you can't be totally honest with you're upset you at capitalism but you can only make a billion dollars in this country by uh by partaking in very uncapitalistic things you will be enslaved by somebody if you have a billion dollars <laughs> so good luck to you taylor uh hope all is well in your world i hope that uh the variants go well and you have the best-selling album of all time um the end. The end. Josh, you said Aunt Carolyn gave you hope. Jordan, have I've, I ever met Aunt Carolyn? I don't know. I mom said that we've met her, and and when I when I saw her, I, she seemed familiar. Um, but it was have been a long time ago. Anyways, our pop pop who passed away a few years ago, his sister moved into town a few weeks ago. Dude, it was. It was pretty wild having her over at mom and dad's house the other day, and uh, um, Easter on Easter I yeah. wasn't able to make yeah, it. Yeah, Jordan wasn't able to make it this 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 time. But um, Aunt Carolyn would be around. She said she was going to come to Elliot's birthday. But it, I mean, it was like it was like it was like a, a small taste of having Pop Up around. It really? was really Were wild. Her, did she? Yeah, seem similar. She, I mean, they look kind of alike. They have some of the same mannerisms, and she was just so good with the kids. They loved her immediately. Elliot went up to her and like asked her to put his shoes on. She did it, and he goes up to her and he goes, "You are so nice." <laughs> <laughs> Elliot said that. Yeah, oh, that's funny. And she was like playing with them and goofing off and doing all this stuff. They had a great wow. They had a really great time. Wow. Um, and just that. I don't really have much else to say other than that. It just was one of those experiences um, where you you you've lost somebody, and then someone else comes into the 
picture and it's like you get a little you feel like you get a little bit of it back dude that's so weird you brought that up because i was just watching matlock and i told you this off yeah. camera but matlock somehow pop up you feel pop up when you're watching matlock it's yeah. weird because pop up loved matlock i don't know if he picked up some of andy griffith's like mannerisms or something because he watched it so much he watched like two episodes a day yeah and i think walker texas ranger came <laughs> on after that <laughs> but pop pop's I, ne I never really liked matlock because it was just a lot of talking yeah it's yeah it's a lawyer it probably show. took no time to film at all yeah because it's just like courtroom his yeah. office yeah. another off locate off scene location but i would always watch uh, walker texas ranger because a lot of kicking and fighting oh yeah lots of slow-mo kicking and fighting yes it was a great show yeah. i want I, you know actually at walmart i saw the complete series on dvd it, of, was, it was 60 of bucks. Walker Walker Texas nice I, 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 bet it, I bet it includes the movies too no it didn't it was just the, it was just the show I didn't buy it it was at Walmart now it's gone I think oh I man find. anyways uh, so uh, yeah but just get watching Matlock saw it was on Amazon Prime I was like oh, pop up like the show clicked it on it was like so good I was like dude <laughs> Yeah, and it was weird. It was like it was like seeing Pop Pop in some way. It was yeah. weird. And then anyway, so when you said that with Aunt Carolyn, it's almost like Aunt Carolyn is is like a grandparent figure. That Isn't really, that weird? That was really what it felt like. It was. It's it, all of a sudden you thought you had no more grandparents and another grandparent. Like, that's what it felt like. It, it it was just so weird. It was like one weird. of the most unexpected. As soon as she walked in and started playing with the boys, I was like, I just feel like I got something back that I thought I was never gonna have wow. again. And well, it, I'm really it, sad I couldn't go. It was really neat. Oh, I'm sure she'll be around. I'm sure she'll be around. So um, I don't think Aunt Carolyn watches our show, but we uh, we love you, Aunt Carolyn. And, okay. And I will love you when I yes, meet you. Yes, Jordan will love I'm you. I'm sure I've met her in the past. Right? Yeah, when she walked in, I was like, oh, yeah, I've, I've, we've okay, met before. Okay. So anyways, what do you uh, got? Well, I what already, gave you hope? I already talked about this, but the the pipe work that I that I did, it was just great to – it was it was a big job. Like literally, I would have had to have paid somebody a thousand dollars to do what I did. Yeah. Over the course of two days, and I still have more to do. And it probably it would literally cost would have cost me probably two thousand dollars to do to have somebody to do this. It, this is not a small thing. Like I'm soldering many many things in hard to reach places and stuff like that. And the fact that I'm able to do that now is looking back six years ago. Yeah, it just blows my <laughs> mind. It's it's crazy. So you have so many skills in your toolbox that you know how to do now. So, I enjoy the plumbing. Yeah, I really every time I do it, it's it's like one of the most frustrating things to do and the most nerve wracking because you can build, like we built a playground. Okay, like we know. It, okay, I'm standing on it. It works. You you're shutting the water off at the street. You're, right. you're you're like okay i'm like soldering eight different things nine different things i'm i'm it, it let's go turn the water on and see if it leaks Very and it's 10 30 at night and if it leaks you're staying up and you're redoing yep. it so i i didn't it, none of it leaked which was great and i put a valve in and, to and, turn and the shower once, off. once you turn the water off you're just like well i'm committing to doing this now well you're, you're yeah. not committing when you turn the water off you're committing once you make whatever that cut is yeah but it is funny <laughs> it's like i told sarah i was like ah man i can I can like come up with a plan, but until I turn the water off, yeah. then it's like my brain is like, okay, fully dialed in. Like, right. what are we doing? What is it's the gotta plan? Be here? Quick. It's yeah. got to be quick. And it wasn't it's got to be good. It was like eight hours, but yeah, you did a great job. Yeah, it turned out really great. Um, I still have the heat side of the uh, shower to do because it, we're. It's just a long story, but I have to move. <laughs> I have to move this pipe work because we're rerouting our eight our air duct to not go through the base directly through the basement it's going to turn and go into a closet so it's the roof the ceiling of the closet so it's out of the the way yeah uh and then it kind of comes back out uh but it's all like around the perimeter of the room instead of right directly in the center anyway so the air duct was going to hit some of the pipe work so i'm having to push that pipe work back and while i'm pushing the pipe work back which would take no time at all i looked at a lot of the joints and it was like man these like i'm not going to be able to easily access these i will be able to access them but it won't be easy yeah. so if i'm going to change joints like i'm just going to change them all when i have complete visibility of it so yeah. now it's like pretty much like uh you know, you have 300,000 miles on your car, on your car engine, then you redid the engine, now it's at zero miles. That's yeah. what it's like. There so I won't go. ever have to worry about that again. There you go. And now it's done. I, I you know, you when you first bought that house, uh, we made that video. Remember I came over and we shot that video of like, 
Oh yeah, yeah, house yeah, tour. Yeah, 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 when you yeah. get done with all your projects, you need to make a, like an that's update, true. an update video just to say, "Here's everything I did over the last ten years, or however that's long." A, it's been that's since a that's a good idea. How how many years have you been in there? Uh, six and a half. Yeah, so in like it's seven or, six, or eight, seven, nine years total. Seven. Once you're done with everything, I thought me and Sarah. Well, this is, is this the end of the episode? No, it's not. But we. Uh, what do you What do you have to recommend? This my recommend uh, was to show and tell. Do you want to Do you want to do that, or do you just want to? No, I'll, well, yeah, sure, I'll show. Just go ahead. We'll do it now. Because mine was just going to be something that I. Oh, check this thing out. This is that's a finger grip. It right? is, yeah. I don't even know how I transitioned into this, but anyways, we're transitioning into it. Uh, this this thing this hangs. You hang from this. Uh, you can put. It came with a little dinky string, which I wouldn't suggest using because you have okay. to tie it manually. But if you Th this is like oh. such a great way to do like rock climbing because you can it's like the the string goes here and you can rotate it and oh, wherever cool. you want it to be you can then grip that or you can just grip it like this and uh be able to do pull-ups so that's what i do every day i have it like this um to do pull-ups but then i can shift it over and then i can work on my finger strength i can work on my one finger strength three 10 millimeter, you know, which I, I can't do. I put a couple. 20. I put a couple of the rock climbing mounts on the playground in the back, and I realized, oh, this is a skill. This is going to be. Oh, did you actually? Yeah. yeah and it's going to rain here. I know. The apocalypse is about to happen. <laughs> uh, dang, I want to go out there and see that. Oh, well. I should have taken a picture of it at least. This was on Amazon. Check that thing out. Pretty awesome. So I do that now. It's fun. That's why I recommend. All right. Well, we're trying to outrun the weather here, so I guess we're going to say bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a tornado and Sarah's home alone. All right, With everybody. child. With child. Slay the Spire was Josh's. as he already said that. I, and I've already shared that one before, so go check out Slay the Spire. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>